from creating custom QR codes for a website to asking ChatGPT for a table using a simple AI formula. In this video, we'll go over eight awesome free Excel add-ins you probably didn't know. And don't worry, these are super easy to install and simple to use. So let's get into it. Let's first go over how to install an add-in. And for this, just open up Excel and you should find add-ins all the way to the side. So just click on that and from here, go down to more add-ins to be able to have the full list in the Excel store here. And we can search for one. Let's suppose the first one we wanna look at is called the activity timer. So let's search for that up here. And we're happy with this first one. So I'm just going to click on add, agree to the terms and conditions and continue. Once it loads up, you'll find it over here to the side. And what this one allows you to do is record how much time you're spending on any activity. So for example, I might add one activity over here and let's say I call it client one and then just get started by hitting the play button. From here, I might do a bunch of different tasks here on Excel and I might decide to end that one. So just click on end there and then go to the second activity for client two and get started on that one by hitting play. Once I'm done, I will again go ahead and end this one. I can always go back to the previous and continue recording time on it. And at the very end, we can always just paste the data and you can see what it looks like in the middle. This is super useful if you need to time yourself, like maybe you're a consultant billing by the hour, or if you're a student just trying to time yourself on an Excel test. If you ever need to remove an add-in, you can just go right click on it and click on remove add-in. You can also go under add-ins again, under more add-ins and you'll find it under my add-ins this time around. And from here, we can always just click on these three dots and remove it. Next up, we have a people graph. And let's suppose over here, we have this country list and the list of clients. And we would like to see this in some kind of visual. To make it a bit fancy, we can go to add-ins. And let me fast forward how I do this quickly and look for a people graph. I'm just going to add it. And you can see that it shows some sample data over here. If we wanna change this up, we can always click on this data and then under select your data, let's go ahead and select the data that we have, which is this one right over here. And we can just hit on create now. Now you can see how it's updated to the countries that we want with the relevant icons. Under settings, we can customize this a lot more, maybe changing the theme entirely we could also change the shapes. So instead of people, it could be star ratings. Under theme here, we can also change the coloring a bit. And finally, this is fully dynamic. So if I go ahead and update this to 25, say, you'll see how the chart updates as well. In number three, we have ChatGPT for Excel. I'm just going to click on add there. Here we have it. And what we wanna do is ask it some questions and see what it returns. So the first one here is the France population. And for this, it works similar to a normal formula. So we would type equals and AI is what we would type. And here we have a bunch of different features. We'll go with ask. So hit the tab key on that first one. And the prompt is basically the question. We can put it in quotations and just type it. But in this case, we have it to the side. So we can just select that, close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now let's wait for it to load up. And it says that as of July, 2021, the population is approximately 67 million people. Awesome. That's just a simple example though. Let's do something a bit harder. Down over here, you can see that we have a table prompt. So we wanna get a table with the top five football players of all time by birth year and nationality. So this time, instead of ai.ask, we'll go for ai.table. So we'll hit tab on that one. The prompt is going to be this area up over here and we'll just close up parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see that it's made this full table with the ranking, the name of the player, the birth year and the nationality. Now these are two simple examples, but as you might have noticed, if we go to equals AI dot, there's actually a ton of different features that we can use. And over here to the side, we've also got some examples if we ever want to reference them. Next up in number four, we have Fred. No, it's not a person. It's actually the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis Economic Data. That's what it stands for. So you can find it right here. I'm just going to click on add. 
This time around, it's a bit different in that it creates a separate tab in the ribbon. You can see it up over there. So let's take a closer look at it. You can see that we have a ton of different options. First, let's click on Quick Start, which is basically a bit of a guide. And you can see over here, it's basically explaining all of the different things that it can do. So let me just close that and demo it for you instead. I'm going to click on that. And from here, let's suppose I want some data on the national income and more specifically the GDP. So I'm going to click on that, but only this thing shows up. Now, what does that even mean? Well, we just want to click on get data now that we have this code over here. Now you can see we start to get a lot of information, which is simply on the GDP all the way back from 1947. We could switch this from quarterly to annually just by typing an A instead and clicking on get data again, basically as a way to refresh. Now we have it in annual format, as you can see here and down below as well. Same thing goes for the time frame. Maybe we're only interested from 1997, say. So we'll hit enter there and again, click on get data. Now you can see that it only starts in 1997 and we have a lot less in values. Now, what if you don't really want the US data, but you want to look at some other nations? This is a bit more limited, but it's still got the international data over here, where it's got the breakdown for a few countries with a ton of information on them as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't have all of the countries though. Following this, we have the QR for Office add-in, and this one's basically going to allow you to create a custom QR code. So I've searched it up over here, and I'm just going to add it. As you can see, we have this pop-up on the side, like we had before, and here I've just typed the URL of my website, but it doesn't have to be a website. It can also be sending a mail, phone and so forth. So it's really quite customizable. And you can see here that I can change the size and do a few different things. I can just click on insert there and you can see that I have it over here to the side. I can also move it like a regular image as you can see right here. So let's scan this QR code with our phones so I can explain a bit more about our best-selling Excel for Business and Finance course. With our comprehensive curriculum, we cover everything you need to know about Excel, from formatting best practices and shortcuts, to building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. This is basically the course I wish I had before I started working in an Excel heavy corporate job. So if you want to stand out in your job as the go-to Excel person, check out the link in the description below. And if you want more than just Excel, we also offer several other courses, including Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and much more. All right, back to the video. As we're speaking about extracting data from the internet, one add-in that we can't miss is Wikipedia. So for this, we're just gonna go to add-ins again and we'll look for Wikipedia. So it's this first one. I'm just going to click on add there and you'll find it that it's a pop-up to the side. Within it, let's suppose that we want to know the demographics of Japan. So let's say we're happy with this first article and within it, we have a ton of information just like you would in Wikipedia. We can't see the different sections Let's suppose we go for the overview and let's suppose that I like this part over here about the population. So I'm just going to select that part and you can see as soon as I do that, I get this plus sign. So that means I can insert it into my Excel. You can see I've just done that over here. Let me stretch that out so it's a bit easier to read. From there, that's just text though. I can also insert an entire image like this one over here. I can just drag and drop it. It's obviously hard to see right now as I need to resize it, but you get the idea where we can just select text and images as well. So it's really quite a handy tool for some quick analysis. Speaking of analysis, Excel is probably most known for its different data analysis tools. And one of those is the analysis tool pack add-in. For this, it's slightly different to the ones over here as it's probably just a lot more popular. So to install it, we want to go over to file all the way to the bottom under the options. This pop-up should show up and under add-ins, we're going to want to select the analysis tool pack you can see right there as inactive right now and we want to bring it to active. For this, under manage Excel add-ins, we'll click on go. 
Now you can find it up over here. So let's tick on it and hit on OK. Awesome. Now it's added it, but you can't quite see anything. That's because we need to go to the data tab and it's going to be this thing right over here. So click on that. So we get this pop up over here of the different types of data analysis we can do. And this data set that we have to the left has the share prices of these companies by date. So it makes sense to first try to understand it with some descriptive statistics. So you can just look for that and click on OK. Now the input range that we want is all of the values. So control shift down, control shift right. You can see we only have the value selected and not the text. And then we want the output range. Let's suppose we want that right over here to the side. And just make sure you tick on summary statistics as that's what we're looking for. Click on OK and you'll see that we get a huge breakdown for all of this data. This first one's not very useful as it's for the dates, but all of this other stuff has to do with each share price. So for Apple, you can see their mean, their standard error, median, and a ton of other information as well. Awesome, so we've done this descriptive statistics, but now what if we want to find the correlation between these share prices? We can do that. Let me just first delete this area over here. And now we're gonna go back to data analysis again, but this time look for correlation, hit on okay there. And the input range is going to be only the share prices. So control shift down, control shift right, hit enter there. And I'm just gonna put the output range as right around the same place as before over here and hit on okay, just for you to see. So you can see right now that it's basically telling us that column one to one, Basically, Apple to Apple has a perfect correlation. That makes sense. Apple to Microsoft, also highly correlated. But if we go for Apple to ExxonMobil, you can see there's less correlation as they're companies that aren't in the same industry. So this add-in can come very handy for this type of analysis. One final add-in that I wanna mention has to do with the calendar. You might have noticed that Excel doesn't seem to have a calendar by default, but we can add one Again, we'll go over to home under add-ins. We'll go for this first mini calendar and date picker. So let's just go ahead and install that. And it's going to create this small calendar icon. Now, obviously you can not see the different dates and move it around much like an image. So that's already quite useful. That said, it does have some other features. For example, let's suppose that we wanna type in this particular date we can just select it and we're going to get it in there like so. Same thing goes if we want the specific time, we'll click on this icon here and you can see that we get the exact time. Now we can make further customizations to the calendar, like putting the weeks over here to the side or changing when the week starts. So we could start it on a Monday as opposed to a Sunday like it was before. So you can see there, there's quite a few different use cases. Maybe it's for checking in people and what time they come simply by hitting this button. Awesome, now that you know these eight add-ins, an even more powerful add-in is called Power Query. So make sure you learn how to use that with this video over here, or you can take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.